So in the last video, we saw how by approximating our potential about a turning point where the potential is upward sloping, um, we could develop a, uh, an approximate solution in terms of the area functions, psi p, that we could then match to the WKB solutions a little bit further away from the turning point. Uh, by matching these two solutions, uh, we can eventually work out that the true form of our wave function should take on, uh, on something that looks like this. So to the left of our turning point in the classically allowed region over here, our wave function uh, should look something like this. And to the right of our turning point or in the forbidden region, it should look like a decaying exponential like so. Uh, I've skipped over some uh, subtleties and some algebra, but um, we're ultimately uh, in this course going to focus on how we can use these equations to estimate bound state energies. Uh, without going into the details, we can do the same thing for turning point x1, where we had uh, a downward slope, a downward sloping potential. Here, uh, let's say our energy was somewhere here. Okay, so in this case, our forbidden region is over here because the potential is larger than the energy and the allowed region is to the right of x1. In this case, uh, playing the same game, matching our patching solutions to our WKB solutions. This over here should be absolute value, so absolute value of Px. Okay, so here we integrate from wherever we may be in the forbidden region all the way to our classical turning point. So for this is for x smaller than x1, so to the left. And on the other side, We integrate from our turning point all the way to increase whatever increasing x we're interested in. And this is for x larger than x1. Okay, so these are uh, the true patched up forms of our WKB solutions to the wave function. What this means for us um, is we were initially considering a potential that looked something like this. We had some energy E over here so that we had two classical turning points we need to match uh, this solution over here to the right of the turning point with this solution over here to the left of the turning point. So for both of our solutions above here to match in the allowed region, the condition that needs to be satisfied is the integral between the turning points of px dx. This has to be equal to n minus one half pi h bar. And this is for n equals to one, two, three, et cetera. 
And this is the, the, the strength of the WKB solution is uh, once we found approximate forms for the wave functions, we don't actually need them anymore. We're left with this quantization condition for the energy because this is uh, square root of 2m times uh, vx minus e. Uh, so this allows us to estimate uh, the value of these energies for large n. Uh, since we usually deal with large n, this one half is uh, often inconsequential, but uh, we should keep it around since that's the, the true form. Okay, so this is uh, the main result. So for a potential that has two uh, sloping turning points, uh, we estimate so this is uh, a quantization condition used to estimate the energy of a particle confined to this type of potential. For a potential that only has one uh, upward trending slope, so let's say this here is x2 and it's so it has this form so it's infinitely high on this end here and it takes on some general f of x for x larger than zero Okay, so this means that there's only one classical turning point because when it reaches over here, uh, it, it can't, the, there is no turning point, right? Because the, uh, the slope is just rising up infinitely fast. In this case, it will be zero to x2, px, px. So this is uh, under the condition where we only have one uh, sloping potential, one side of a sloping potential. Uh, we essentially lose a factor of one quarter pi h bar from our quantization condition. If you recall, we also did an example where we had an, uh, the infinite potential well. So both sides were rising up infinitely fast. In that case, our quantization condition was just n pi h bar. Um, so the net effect of having sloping potentials is you pick up a quarter factor of pi h bar for each one. Again, this is often inconsequential because we usually deal with large n, but it's the, uh, the exact result that we should use. And again, this is used to approximate bound state energies. So energies of a particle with energy E that's confined to this type of potential. And in the next video, we'll see an example of using uh, this condition for a symmetric linear potential.